Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and to my right and your left, of course, is the lovely Valerie Eliason. Hello, Val. Hey, Glenn. Thank How you. How are you? I'm great. I, had I was a... so happy to see you this weekend. Oh, it was awesome to watch you play. Oh, thank you so for coming exciting. down. It really Get to meant see a lot. Janice. The and fabulous and Rebecca the fabulous was in Rebecca. town. Oh, yeah, that's yep. a treat, too. Yeah. Listen, we're coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV, and you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. Give us a call at 617 708 3290. Dave and the great staff are being in there in the other room answering the phone. So if you want to join the conversation, please feel free to give us a call. Absolutely. Yes, what's new and exciting? Anything? Oh, geez, I had such a fun weekend. I mean, aside from going down to the farmer's market on Saturday and, and taking a in walk JML. in the Jamaica Pond. For those of you who don't know, this there is a service, is, announcement. This is a service <laughs> announcement. There is a toxic blue green uh, algae uh, outbreak in the Jamaica Pond, so don't go into it like I did no, because I did not know. Don't walk on that water. <laughs> don't walk. I did get to, um, I had a really fun event on Friday. Uh -huh. The BCA put oh, on yeah? this uh, from swing to salsa by Lamos. Um, sort of social hour nice from when was it 6 30 to 9 30 yeah probably about six or seven people six or 70 people everyone would swing dancing and then it nice. switched to salsa and we had instructors nice. there like showing people oh it was like moves. classes you could learn how to do it yeah it was it was fun because there'd be like 45 minutes of dancing and then they do a quick like 15 minute class to show you a move and oh, that's great it's, Sounds there's like a lot drinks and snacks it's awesome that's great you know what i do want to make i want i do want to say one thing before we we're going to change the show around a little bit we have a very very special guest with us tonight we're very very proud to have uh, Joshua Kraft is in the studio with us tonight. We're going to take a, we're going to switch things around just a little. Val and I will catch up later, I oh, guess. Yeah. Is that okay? But I do want to remind everybody that if you, if somebody outside of the city that you want them to tune into the program, if they go to www.bnntv.org and click on the little what's playing right now. You'll see our smiling our show, faces. Yes. And it's midnight in Paris. We want to say thank you to those people over there for paying attention and listening to what we're doing. Exactly. We haven't got the translation down yet, but yes. for all you English Merci speakers. Paris. Merci <laughs> Paris. Yes, thanks. So you know what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break right now and, um, and gr get the great Josh Kraft up here because we want to talk, talk about the Boys and Girls Club. This, Obviously, you know, yeah. Th this is the guy at the, at the, at the top of that heap and it's and it's kind of important to, to get him in up here and talking okay oh absolutely so listen gang you are watching bnn tv's it's all about arts my name is glenn this is val if you want to give us a call and join the show please feel free at 617-708-3290 but we'll be back in just a couple of minutes please do not go away
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. We're coming to you live from our beautiful Studio B here at BNN TV. And right now, it's my great pleasure, and believe me, a super honor, uh, to introduce and welcome to the, to the set the Nicholas President and CEO of the Boston, of the Boys and Girls Club, Joshua Kraft. Boys Josh, Girls, Mr. Kraft, Good thank you, you for being here, sir. Thank you for having I, me, I, and I know... Uh, I know you'd much rather be sitting next to Val, oh, and oh, I'm sure the that. viewers would rather be looking at Val, but you're stuck with me for the next I get that honor so. every week, so, I you know, know. I'm, right, she's right. going to give up the seat for just a little while so, so that you and I can chat a little bit. Thank you for okay. coming in. Well, th uh, thank you for having me. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club has, be has become uh, an institution in the city of Boston that, that has, has so many successes as far as our younger citizens uh, are concerned. Um, when did, how did you guys, how did you get involved with the Boys and Girls Myself Club? personally? Yeah, how did, what, So what I've been you? involved with Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston <clears throat> for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I started uh, back in the fall of 1990 in South Boston, uh, running an outreach program in the West Broadway, D Street Development, Old Colony and Old mm -hmm. Harbor. It was a program for kids at middle school kids that were whatever having issues right. with whatever, mm -hmm. and um, I like to say that was the most impactful. My first week there was like the most impactful educational experience of my life because I like to say I'm from the mean streets of Chestnut Hill. <laughs> so when I ended up there, you know, for the first time in my life, I saw things I'd only read about, yeah, you know, from substance abuse, you know domestic violence, yeah. truancy, right. and seeing those problems. And at the same time, I saw what the power of relationships and community at a Boys and Girls Club can do yeah. to help young people overcome those right. things. One of, the, one, of the, one of the groups that I think that really get impacted are those tweeners. You know, the kids that are too young to be playing Little League and not old enough to get a car and go off someplace, right. those 8, 9, 10, 11-year-old yep. kids, 12-year-old kids with nothing to, nothing to do after school or, or, or during the summer, I, I, I find that the Boys and Girls Club has been the option. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, our, you know, all clubs, clubs we serve kids 6 to 18 years mm -hmm. old, but I would say our biggest numbers where you see the highest... Uh, Attendance numbers are usually in that eight to eleven year old. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, the tweeners, you know, uh, and, and it gives them. It gives them, Describe for for our friends out in being in land. Maybe they, they aren't familiar with with the Boys and Girls Club. What kinds of things are happening at, at the clubs around the city these days? So for us, you know, we we have six core program areas around education the arts, technology, life skills, leadership, and sports, fitness, and recreation. Mm -hmm. So within those six core areas, there's a number of programs from tutoring and MCAS preparation to um, dance programs to travel soccer leagues, mm -hmm. et cetera, and so on and so on. A Keystone Club, which is a team leadership program. And so there's just many, many programs within each core program area. But beyond that, what really has made Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston and other clubs, you know, there's other clubs in the city that are separate that are as impactful or more impactful. Mm -hmm. um, what really has carried Boys and Girls Clubs for so many years is the power of the adult relationships and mm -hmm. making kids feel safe, feel like they belong somewhere, and ultimately that leads to them feeling empowered and that their decisions and what they do in life makes a difference. Right. Well, a as you know, uh, up until till this, this summer, I I've been involved with the Boys and Girls Club at, at, diff at different levels and stuff. And one of the things, as, 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 a, as an adult man, that, that I, I run into a lot of are kids that don't have that kind of role model at home, be it because the house is, uh, is, is in disarray or because there's, there isn't a man living in, in the home. Do you, do you find that, 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 that the staff people that, that you have working at these clubs are filling some of those roles for some of our young Yeah, I, de I definitely feel like staff fill that role mm. in a boys and girls club. Mm. And, you know, it's the big role of being there for the kid all the time. The consistency. You know, running the pro program, the consistency. But it's also the little things. So kid that comes in a lot, comes in, Glenn comes in, and the staff says, Glenn, did you do your homework today? Yeah. How is school today? How's your mom? You might know that there's issues with the mom. Right. How's your mom feeling these days? Right. And 
it's those little things too that add up mm -hmm. to building that sense of trust and right. safety. I think the relationship is really, really it's so important. powerful. Yeah, you know, because because I've noticed when kids come in and, and they see Tunji over in yeah. over in Orchard Gardens, they see Tunji, they have to go over and give him a hug yeah, and let him know that you know. And it's that that the foundation of, of security I think is really, really important. Right, and the openness and yeah. and that leads to safety. And you know, so many kids doesn't matter if they're from Boston or they're from Newton. Well, I think it's a lot. A anywhere, a kid wants to feel safe, mm -hmm. and if they don't feel safe. They're not going to take risks. They're not going to be productive. That's excellent. Uh, one of the programs that, that I have been just so over, incredibly impressed with is that Great Camp Harbor View yeah, yeah, program. It's that unbelievable. You have. Is yeah. that incredible? <clears throat> it's incredible, and we're so fortunate that you know Jack Connors and yeah, the, Jack is in the uh, Harbor View Foundation, mm -hmm. which is housed at the Connors family office yeah. in the city of Boston, first with Mayor Menino, and now, of course, with his great successor, Mayor Walsh, you know, believe in Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston enough to entrust us as the vendor to run the program, not only through the summer, but year round. Yeah. And it's just incredible, you know, kids who live in the city two, three miles from the ocean mm. have never seen Boston Harbor. Yeah. So they get out to that island and they see the harbor mm -hmm. for the first time, even though they li might live right up the street from where we are now, right, and that's right. what, two, three miles away. I think one of the amazing things about the program, and, and I'm going I'm to call out Greg Stoddard's name here, because what, and, 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 Ron, and Ron Howard, over the, one of the things that happens is that they, it's a feeder program to their LIT program, yeah. the kids that are going to be supporting the younger kids. There are kids that have grown through the program out there and within the Boys and Girls Club. And that's the year-round part of it. It's not just the summer camp. During, during the school year, they're also dealing with right. the kids that are in the, these leadership roles. And they, took a, they take a group of them to Japan every year. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, it's, uh, Greg has done such a great job. Ron Carroll. Ron Carroll. Who's now, sorry. he's now the director of our Mattapan Teen Center. Yeah, I want to talk about great. that. In we bit. will. Yeah, and yeah. Ron has been great. Um, I'm sure some of your viewers have had contact with Ron. Ron's been right here on the show. Oh, I, yeah. Ron is the man. <laughs> yeah, Drag so. them all in here. Okay. It's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, He'll tell me he was better than me on TV. He'll tell me he got better reviews. <laughs> more, the, uh, more viewership. Maybe. More viewership for RC. Yeah, exactly. Um, He'll tell me. It, 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 it's, it can't happen under a, under a dome. I mean, there's got to be some partners. There must, oh. There's got to be people. Jack Horn is, 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 yeah, is obviously an amazing right. the partner. The city of Boston. The city but, of Boston. But, but there's got to be other people that are. That yeah, are, you know, it's really a part of our culture. We're, if we're not partnering with organizations, and this goes, you know, we have 11 clubs plus Camp Harborview, plus our Youth Connect program, which is a partnership with the Boston Police Department, yep. led by Andrea Perry. We have uh, clinical social workers at seven or eight police stations throughout the city, mm -hmm. including the gang unit and the school unit. But really, none of us, none of our employees in our clubs or Youth Connect or Harborview are doing our job if we're not partnering with other nonprofits. And right. that, Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston, we have just over 200 partners. It's amazing. And they range from large, like the Museum of Fine Arts mm -hmm. and Mass General Hospital, mm -hmm. who's partnering with us on a huge health initiative. They've been a great partner, you know, Dr. Slavin over there and his leadership and the community people, Joan Quinlan, um, to smaller nonprofits, like right up the street from here, Bites Not Bombs, yep. the Children's Room in Arlington, mm -hmm. which deals with grief. And, Everything in between, many programs that you know of, yeah. and, you know, the Music and Youth Initiative, mm -hmm. and we're just so, we feel like in order to serve the kids and the families and the communities that we do in our 11 programs and, and Camp Harbor View and Youth Connect, we have to partner, because if we're not, we're not doing our job, because right. we're not presenting the most important thing to our club members, and mm -hmm. that's opportunity. Right. And opportunity leads to hope for their future. Are they bringing more to to the programming than just you know? Okay, yeah, we're going to partner and we're going to kind of. I know, I know they do. I know, like for instance, the Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, I was so fortunate when I was out at the Camp Harborview to be able to work with them close enough to be bringing artists and curators mm -hmm. from there to do things at the camp. Um, part of the partnership is them being actually physically involved in a lot of things too. Yeah, yeah, of course. So there might be staff. Staff might come and train our staff on how to run certain yeah. programs, but other times they might bring staff in 
to work with our kids around whatever it is they're doing, yeah. uh, grief counseling, right. what have you. Just, just a few hours ago, right around the corner from here, three young, young kids lost their lives to street violence. Today? Today. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. Sorry uh, to hear that. What, what, is, what, what does the boys, and how does the Boys and Girls Club, there's no preventing violence, yeah, no, you know? Unfortunately. Uh, what do we say to our kids? What do we, what do we say to them to, to assure them that, you know, it's, an, it's isolated and the streets aren't... I you think know, you, you, you reassure them, and we've talked about it already, Glenn, you reassure them and their families and the community members that when they come in the door of the building, just like we came in that door there, yeah. that they are safe mm -hmm. and that they're going to be looked at uh, after and they're going to be safe. And in addition, there's other ways to do that. I know at Boys and, Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston, as well as the other clubs in the city, I think all of us find it, it's a privilege to work with the Boston Police Department. Yes. And, and we invite them in to do workshops, you know, Commissioner Evans and, and the whole team there, his leadership. They come in, they show face at the clubs, they're interacting with the kids, and mm -hmm. that's another thing. You know, you try to break down the barrier that mm -hmm. might exist between kids and the police, and yeah. the police are there to enhance that feeling of safety. One of the things the Boston police did with, with the Roxbury Club was they brought those kids to the, for a whole week, they kind of became the junior police academy members. Mm -hmm. Brought them to the police academy, ran them through some drills, brought them you know, mm -hmm. to different places, brought them to the place where the bomb squad things are yeah. and all that. Just kind of exposed them. And all of those kids, towards the end of that week, were saying things like, gee, I didn't know that the, that the police you know, would be friendly. I didn't know that I could you know, talk to these, to these people like that. It's breaking down some barriers, I think, that, are, that, that, that need to be not just so broken that's, down, but yeah, run and that, over. And that's one of the things we try to do, mm. in addition to just creating our own atmosphere of safety. Yeah. Let's talk about Ron's place over there. It's the newest Ron club in Carroll, the city, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we opened it last November. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it was such a great day to open that building. It was an old library. And we converted it now to a teen center that focuses on arts, edu uh, performing arts, education, and leadership for mm -hmm. 12 to 18-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're letting some 12-year-olds in. But they've been great. You know, Ron is the leader there. Jess is running the ed programs. And Devin... Uh, Devin is doing some great oh, yeah. music. Music, come on. You can't yeah, have a better Devin. person over there for <laughs> Devin, that. that's for sure. <laughs> and, um, you, and they're just... They're opening the doors, they're getting the kids in. I, I was there for an album. They did their first Mattapan Records album release party back in the spring. It was a great event. Oh, that's fabulous. And then a couple of Saturdays ago, they run a martial arts class, and they have kids from Brookline learning martial arts with kids from Mattapan. And they're doing that all Saturday through the spring. They had a big, uh, I don't want to say performance, but I guess you'd call it a demonstration the mm -hmm. last Saturday in Showcase June. Or and they're running the same program this summer. They'll be running it in the fall as well. Mm. And again, that goes to partnership, um, and it goes to um, just Ron's vision for the community, exposing mm -hmm. kids, presenting Perfect opportunities. Guy over there. Oh, yeah, Ron is, Ron is a good man. Yeah. Um, makes us look good. <laughs> makes me look all, Let me tell you, all of our club directors make our organization look good. They do. You know, whether it's Ron, Mattapan, Andrea Swain at yeah. the Yaki Club. I know we're on Boston, but Michelle Perez over in Chelsea. I yeah. mean, really make, and there's so many. Andrea Perry I mentioned, you know, there's uh, Carl over at Blue Hill. Just make us all look great. Yeah, I know. Uh, so many to mention now. I, no, I know you're gonna, I feel, you'll get a call later. What about? <laughs> yeah, so they can call me. Uh, okay, call here if you got a, if you got a question. Yeah, yeah, you can give me a hard time, it's okay. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about a little bit of history. How long has the Boys and Girls Club been, been around? I know the Yawkey Club's 100 years old, isn't it? So Maybe Boys and now. Girls Clubs of Boston, we've been around 100 and, since 1893. So mm -hmm. I'm not the best in math. Uh, that's a long time ago. That's a long, long time ago. <laughs> 100 and almost 125 Something years. Something like that. Yeah, yeah close. I'm yeah. about my little off. I don't 24. Know. But anyway, yeah. 124. And... Uh, it started with the Charlestown Club, uh -huh. and uh, I know we have a great director there, Pete Nash, who mm -hmm. actually uh, is great, um, and he's worked at the Southie Club before, uh, and that was the first club, and then 
Uh, Yawkey was the second, South Boston. Then it was Blue Hill, Chelsea. And then we picked up the shared space clubs. You know, we have clubs in three Boston public schools. Yeah, talk about that shared space and standalone. Thing. So the shared what... space clubs are in, we have three in Boston public schools. One at the Condon School. Uh -huh. uh, David Shaw is the director there. Uh, one at the Hennigan School in um, Jamaica Plain, right around the corner from here. Amy yep. Belmarsh is over there. And Nina is the director over at the Sumner in, in Roslindale, right, right down the street. Yeah, yeah your hometown. Yeah. And you're talking about the farmer's market, farmer's market. which I think she goes to. So I've seen her over there. Many, you know, in fact, they got the, the piano they have there we had set up at the farmer's market for the whole summer. It was one of these initiatives where they're going to drop pianos in parks and people were going to yeah. play them and stuff and they weren't going to get damaged and stuff. Nina ended up with the, uh, there you the go. piano. Nina knows how to operate. She got She's it got, over there, yeah. Told you, she makes us look good in the main <laughs> office. They, they all do. Yeah. Then we have a shared space club in the Franklin Hill housing development and the renovated one. Tanya Gould is over there. Yeah. Then we're in the Orchard Garden yeah. Community Center. The city turned that over to us, you know, out of Tunji. Yeah. Is the Mattapan Teen Center and uh, now a, a, a shared space means that you're kind of sharing the yeah, so the, in the school yeah, yeah. so at two o'clock Josh the teacher leaves and Glenn the boys and girls club staff takes yeah. over yeah yeah and the kids stay till six yeah yeah continuation of of whatever. their day educate yeah whatever yeah. needs to be done we do we 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 do a lot of educate you know one of the things that I was doing that I enjoy over there is I had the little kids journaling. Getting on that great Timothy Smith lab yeah, that we have awesome. over there, right. uh, and 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 opening blank documents. It got to the point where they'd run into the room, blank document, blank document. Yeah, you know, and they're just learning how to do these these computers. Six, seven year old kids learning how to use computers. The only thing they thought computers were for were for I'm going to age myself, space invaders and stuff like that. Because I'm not so sure what these games Pac are. Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Yeah, I'm not Donkey sure. Kong. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I, I do want to take one second to tell you that, uh, that a, a, as I've been working you know, with, with the club for many years, now that, I'm, now that I'm leaving, I want to tell you how comfortable you made us all feel. You know, sometimes when, when the big cheese comes walking into the building, people go, oh my, you know, they kind of fix their desk a little bit, maybe straighten their tie out and stuff like that. You've always made me feel comfortable. You, well, you've come into my room and always said, hi, Glenn, how's everything going? And made, showed a great interest in what I was doing. And, and that made, uh, made my relationship with the, with the Boys and Girls Club very, very important to me. And I want to make sure that I, I take this second to tell you. Well, I appreciate that, Glenn. But really, and I'm not, I mean this so hard, I think the staff we have is terrific. Mm. And I love getting out, to the, getting out to the club, seeing them. They make, my job, like I said, they yeah. make us look good. Mm -hmm. So... I'm all, it's, it's an I love just hanging out and yeah. talking to them. And, and, and your mother, uh, God bless her, was, was a big part of this too, because I know there's a big plaque in, in our club that, uh, no, that yeah, they, yeah. they named the gym after. Through Good Sports, another one yeah. of my great partners. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah she was uh, involved on the board. She was chair of the board, first woman chair of the board. And, you know, from my parents, my mom and my dad, you know, done, and, and my family, my brothers, uh, Jonathan and Danny, they... We believe our feeling, when it comes to philanthropy, the most important thing to us is access. Mm -hmm. So providing access to opportunities, be it health opportunities for those who might not have it, be it the thousands of kids that come into a boys and girls club, right. be it scholarships for kids who can't afford to go to school, mm -hmm. you know, public, or, I mean, private prep schools to colleges to graduate school. So that access is so important. I think my mother loved the clubs because every kid who walked in the door had access to opportunities that he or she might not have if they didn't right. walk in those clubhouse doors. And that changes the equation, hopefully. It's cer it's cer it certainly does. I mean, the opportunity to, for, for uh, Stephen Turner to, to be able to sit with somebody and, and go through what I'm going to do for college, how do I get these applications done right, and there's somebody always there willing to kind of, kind of sit with them and say, okay, we'll, we'll do this, we'll work this out, let's get this resume, let's do this, this is how you have to do this, this is what happened to me when. And, uh, and there's never been a shortage of people that have been able to sit and talk to them about mm -hmm. that. If it wasn't me, it, it was Tunji, if it wasn't, it was uh, Andre or somebody, be able to sit and talk with them. And, and I think that that's club-wide, obviously, and, and you're right, access to opportunity is, sounds like a mission statement to me. Yeah. Josh, thank you so much. Thank you, Glenn. I can't tell you how much Thanks I appreciate you Thanks for having me. I appreciate here. you having me. And uh, 
you know, thank you for having me. No, thanks. thanks for your work with the club. No, I, I appreciate that. I'm gonna. I'm on to bigger, better, better not better, bigger things. No, that's right. <laughs> bigger for me, things bigger. for me, I'm growing. You know. Yeah. Hey, look. In life, you got to do what's best for yourself. Absolutely. So I don't have a problem with that. Thank you very much. Thank Listen, you. Gang. Listen, gang. We're gonna take a quick break. We're going, to, uh, we're going to be back with, uh, with a couple of things, but uh, I just want to say again, thank you to Joshua Kraft for being here. Him and his thank family you. have made a huge, huge difference in this city. And if you don't recognize it, drop into a Boys and Girls Club and see what's going on some one of these days. Really, uh, you'll, be, you'll be amazed and proud of your city when you see what's going on. Listen, I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please don't go away. We're coming to you live from Studio B. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back, gang. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn, as uh, I've probably said it to a nauseam, but thank you for coming back. I appreciate having you here. It was great to talk to, uh, to, to Jonathan, uh, Josh, Joshua Kraft uh, about the Boys and Girls Club. They're doing some great things, and that invitation is, is for real. Drop in and check it out, see what's going on. But what I got to do before we get to Val's view is I got to let you know and, and thank the great people that help keep us on the air here. I'm very, very fortunate and happy to be, will you hear you there? There you are, hi Val. Uh, it's very, very important to, uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, Boston Main Streets program. Boston Main Streets has been our partner and, and friend here at BNN TV uh, for many, many years and we're very, very happy about the things that they have been doing around the city. Boston Main Streets is that nonprofit organization that helps revitalize the business districts around the city. Sometimes the business district kind of gets in disarray and kind of falls to, uh, to some less marketable or, or less appealing sta state and uh, Boston Main Streets comes along and develops a program in that community to help revitalize that business district. Uh, one of the things they do, and it's all volunteers. There's just a couple of people at the head of this that are being paid to keep the lights on and, and the, the pencils sharp, but what happens is is uh, they work with the property owners so that they get some demographic information about the area so they'll know what kind of business to put down into their storefront. Once the storefront is full, then they talk about the design committee, great architects and, and designers get to work with the, with the business owner to develop a storefront so that they look beautiful and all that kind of stuff. And then there is a promotions committee. The promotions committee run different events, uh, like the farmer's market on, um, 
on Saturdays in Rosendale Square, but they're doing this all over the city. There's about 22 of them. And if you see somebody with a Main Streets t-shirt, make sure you thank them for Val and I, because we're very, very happy and proud about what they're doing around the city. So make sure you thank them for us. The other thing I like to talk about, just a quick second, is this amazing building that we're in. BNN TV is the access station here for the city of Boston. Uh, what you can do here is Channel 9 here, what you can do, you can talk, uh, bring your nonprofit in and you can sit and talk about what your mission statement is, bring guests in like I just did with, with Mr. Kraft, bring different uh, people in to talk about what your mission statement is and the things that you are doing. Uh, and then the other side, which is on Channel 23, I'm going to give you a chance to just click over there real quickly to see what they're doing on Channel 23. We'll be back in just a second. I'll wait here for you. 32 new officers. Uh, for those of you who missed it, they had a ceremony recently uh, down at Faneuil Hall, the 32 officers. Well, there you go. See, now on the other station, they're talking, there's a police, there's a community policing thing going on, which is kind of cool. Uh, but over here, uh, we're talking about the arts. So there's an opportunity here for you to become a member of that side, too, for a small membership fee. You'll join and you'll get some classes in, in Final Cut Pro. You'll get some digital performer or, or Pro Tools classes for sound. You're going to learn about these lighting, lighting situations, the audio, how to work these amazing cameras, and you'll be able to do your own programming right here at BNN TV. The way you do that is you go to www.bnntv.org and you click on Janice Williams or Jim Atwood's name, that's how you do it, and they um, um, get you started. They have all the answers on how to do it. So listen, it's been a lot of fun. Listen, I think it's time for, wait, is it time for a Val's view? Is, is it, it is, is it? yeah. Valerie, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I thank you for, for squeezing yourself in there. I appreciate it. I did, I like wedged my way into the, it was like Willy Wonka, that part I like where he friend, gets into the microwave. Too. <laughs> School is one month away. Thank you, Dave. Uh, listen, without further ado, it is time for Val's view. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, so we have a couple of fun things going on in the city of Boston in the next few weeks. But, I mean, there's always fun things going on in the city of Boston. Um, so first on our list, we have Merge Arts Boston. Uh, it's going on August 23rd from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, now, Merge Arts is a great organization that uh, provides a consistent platform and business resources for artists. Um, they have a branch in New York and they have a branch in Philly. Uh, the one that they just opened here in Boston has only been open since May, and there's already an incredible amount of overwhelming support and artists that are a part of the group. Um, I, got the, I got the chance to go last month, so you should definitely check it out. It's at Venue Nightclub in Boston, right off Stewart Street. Um, it's wonderful. It's, there's, it is a 21 plus event, so you can get cocktails, you can check out local artists. There was a fashion show last time I was there, dance performers. It was really, really great. So um, if you don't have to wake up too early on a Monday morning, head down, check it out on August 23rd. You definitely uh, don't want to miss it. So you can check out the website to buy tickets, or you can buy them at the door also. Uh, second on our list, we have the Wharf Festival. Now, this is a pretty long-standing tradition with Boston. Um, we're, we're always celebrating our beautiful waterfront throughout the summer, but the Wharf Festival is probably one of the best festivals on the waterfront. It's going on August 15th from 11 to 3. Uh, it is presented by Boston Harbor Cruises, the New England Aquarium, and Faneuil Hall Marketplaces. Uh, it's a celebration of the wonderful summers that we have here in Boston. And it's going to be a day that you and your family definitely don't want to miss. There's going to be uh, face painting, there's going to be aquarium costumes, you might see people in big, giant, Nemo-looking costumes. There's going to be lots of outdoor activities, and best of all, it's free. So go out and enjoy uh, this kind of last month of summer that we have down there, and soak up some sun, and hang out with your local Bostonians. Uh, so third on our list, we have a South Boston Week. Now, that's going on the week of August 18th to the 22nd. It's going on in the South Boston neighborhood, if you couldn't uh, pick that up by the name of it. Uh, it's a week-long celebration of the beautiful, diverse waterfront neighborhood that is South Boston, or Southie 
we Bostonians like to call it. Uh, there's going to be these awesome demonstrations of uh, blowing balloon, uh, sorry, bubbles the size of cars with one of those like, big swinging bubble uh, makers. There's going to be um, kite flying on Castle Island, concerts at Carson Beach, and you're going to get to explore South Boston. I mean, that the area right now is, is changing a lot. I feel like the, the area in South Boston is constantly changing, but it is one of the most proud neighborhoods, I think, in the city of Boston. It's where our real roots are, and the area holds so much history about our city. So definitely want to go down there and hang out, you know, bring your friends, bring your family, uh, enjoy your time, and celebrate our awesome city. Uh, so that's what I have for you for Bell's View for this week. I hope you get to check out some of those events. It's always my pleasure to bring to you the fun things and places and to-dos out and around Boston. Uh, so without further ado, though, I am going to throw it, ooh, I am going to throw it to a quick commercial. Uh, so we'll be back in a couple minutes, just a quick little 60-second change around, and you'll see Glenn and I and our lovely faces smiling right back at you. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. One, two, one, two, three.
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging out with us. That is a song, an oldie from Low Budget Records. That's one of my favorites. I love when they play that for the Speaking of Low Budget Records, uh, we uh, big shout out to Mr. Kurt and Tim Casey and all the guys, Dr. X. Oh, yeah. For performing down there at Rosendale Square at the Farmer's Market. It was very, very exciting, very, very cool. The other thing that was really, really cool that day was Boston Creates was down there. Yes, there was, it was a morning meeting, wasn't it? How it was. It, go? It, it went amazing. Uh, Nine o'clock, we, uh, we, we were set up. It's what, here's what the premise was. On August 1st, they wanted to have meetings around the city. Not, not necessarily meetings, but more conversations where people were going to sit around and talk about the arts. Yeah. Some of the things that uh, people would like to see, some of the things that people thought that the city could do better, some of the things that the city was doing great. They wanted yeah. to have a conversation about it. And um, most of the uh, places, most of the other communities had meetings yeah. in the community center or a meeting here or a meeting at a coffee shop or something like that. We decided to do it a little different. Uh, Jocelyn Huff is my, my co-host, my mm -hmm. co-chair in, in Rosendale, and we decided, you know, let's, let's do it at the farmer's market. Yeah. Let's put up some flip charts and get people different colored markers and just put the questions up there. Ask them directly to come up and just say, you know, give, us an op give them an opportunity to kind of write down what they want. That's a great idea. Yeah, you should see the responses we got. I'm we excited. got hundreds of them. It was a mob tent. Jocelyn did an amazing job. I was running around like a, like crazy trying to get this done and that <laughs> the music done. The music and the music and, and, and my regular farmers market duties and stuff. So it was I was kind of all over the place. But I did get a chance to go over and set the set the set the scene up and and did some shooting. Got some video and some pictures taken and, and stuff and had some a bunch of conversations with people. That's awesome. And then right in the middle of it, the great. Um, uh, chief of the arts in the city of Boston in the mayor's cabinet uh, 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 turned around and all of a sudden Julie Barrows was standing there. Oh wow. So Julie Barrows herself showed up. She was going to go to a bunch of them. I kind of got a little heads up that she was going to be coming to Roslindale first and she was supposed to come and stay for five or six minutes and kind of glad hey, and say yes thank yeah. you everybody for being here and kind of that start the conversation of she was there for almost an hour she That's couldn't awesome. she couldn't get away because there was so much so much enthusiasm and so many people involved that uh, who wanted to participate um, so she had actually one-on-one -on -one conversations with a lot a lot of people That's awesome. uh, Incredible. so I, I, I think that that we kind of got a lot of questions answered. So it was a big success. That's good to hear. What yeah. kind of questions were people asking? Uh, what is it about Roslindale that you like? Okay. Where do you go, what, where do you get your entertainment from? Uh, what kind of art do you think should be available? Do you think art is available? Those kind of questions. Okay. And uh, we got some, some where, where do you think we should be in 10 years? Yes. Those kind of, in, involving the arts. Talk, yeah, not just course. talking about our, our community as our place we live, but our community as an artful place. Where are we going to be? And we got some amazing, amazing responses. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear what, that. what do you see uh, in the future? I'm going to hit you with a couple of the questions. Yeah. What is it about sure. Roslindale you think that makes Roslindale a, a special place? You're, you're a new resident. I you, am. Going you, on you, a year now. You didn't have to move to Roslindale to be on this show. Although, <laughs> although it was right at the top of it the... It was a great coincidence, <laughs> though, wasn't it? That you were moving in. Yes. What is it about Rosendale? What does oh, Rosendale gosh. have and do? Honestly, I, f I feel like we have the best people in Rosendale. Mm. I've made so many friends, um, neighbors, We're everyone's great so people kind. In We're very everyone's, fortunate. everyone's proud of their neighborhood. Everyone's always out and walking around mm -hmm. at night. You know, it I feels to, like a neighborhood to you? It feels like a neighborhood. People go down to um, Jimmy's to get ice cream. Mm -hmm. I, I like to walk down there with my roommate sometimes. I, it's just, it, it's, you get such a sense of community being That's around there, and mm -hmm. I love it. I would like to see maybe, um, maybe a couple galleries opening, maybe. 
That would be great. I think that, that was fun. mentioned quite a bit of times. Yeah. Quite a bit of times. Quite a few times. <laughs> uh, to uh, to have a space where people can actually go and where local artisans can show their work. Yeah. You know, I mean, they have that great open studios once a year, but to have a specific place where people can stop and go and see a, 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 a an art opening or or just go and kind of be artfully. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Even if there was like a merger of like a copy place and yeah. you could put up some local artists' pieces on the yeah. wall. And people I, th I think that, that. that, that that's a reality. That does happen. Um, but I, I, I'd love to see an art center. Me too. You know, an actual place that, that has that Rosendale Association of Arts or the, the Rosendale Performance Center or the Rosendale Gallery, something of that nature run by artisans in Rosendale. Uh, to to you know kind of fill some of those voids that, yeah. that are there. What are some of the things you think that maybe the city's not quite getting right? You, I mean, you get out there. You, you've been you've been our liaison on the street so successfully and, and doing and doing some great stuff, uh, being visible and people seeing you. Uh, what are you? What are some of the things you think that we need to add to what's already there? In terms of in Roslindale? Well, let's take Sorry, the everyone. city. Let's take the city okay. into consideration this time. I mean, it's, you know, Roslindale, we already know. We need lots of stuff. Yeah. But as far as the city, it's tough to answer that question because there is that great waterfront that you talked about. Mm -hmm. These amazing um, <coughs> galleries and uh, schools and uh, museums and stuff. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that we're missing? You know what? It's... It's funny you Excuse mentioned me. that because I was thinking about that the other day. That even so, I've been in Boston for about six years now, uh -huh. um, and I've seen a drastic change from just your uh, fine arts oil paintings of the city or oil paintings of the Charles, which are gorgeous, they're classics. Who doesn't love that? But I've seen such a uh, change in the art world where you're seeing um, <coughs> me, artists sorry. with different mediums and more contemporary per se A little more art. contemporary And art? I've been really enjoying that because I know, uh, you know, Boston is, is such, it's a beautiful city mm -hmm. and I, it sticks really strongly to its traditions. Mm -hmm. And I've been really enjoying seeing um, different kinds of artists or new artists sort of prosper in the city and I definitely want us to keep working at that because there's a 101 galleries you know right. on Newbury Street right. that all have incredible paintings of the Charles right. River but you know that uh, different styles and different mediums and different you know younger artists or mm -hmm. older artists I, I like to see a, a big mix of variety mm -hmm. you know do you think Boston is a place where an artist could make a living I th think it wouldn't be as easy as New York mm -hmm. per se but I have seen a huge growth um, actually a friend of mine opened up a gallery a couple years ago maybe about five years ago and it's gotten so big he started out with just some of his friends showing pieces and yep. now they're booked two years straight oh, through for great. shows they go down to that huge art show that's in um, Florida in Miami mm -hmm. and it's it's awesome to see people succeed at what they love I've, right. I've really been enjoying it where do you see, let's get back to Rosin, what, do you, what can you see in the, in the future? I mean, uh, put your genie cap on and, and, tell, and tell me, what would you like to see, something tangible, besides, besides the art center, something that would make Rosendale, Roslindale-ish? Hmm, Rosendale has so much. I think, I think honestly we don't utilize the Arboretum as much as we should. Oh, yeah. It's such a beautiful place yeah. and um, it, you know there's a couple festivals maybe there a few times a year but mm -hmm. um, other than that I feel like we should use it more as like the a fact community that, the gathering. The fact that part of it is in Roslindale is, is, is a, it would be a great resource to have a, a pumpkin festival or a yeah. lantern festival like they do so well in that Jamaica would be Plain. That awesome, yeah. You know, something like that would be just awesome. So. I mean, we do so much with the community already, especially with the uh, farmer's market. But yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Like mm -hmm. um, maybe uh, Rosendale Art Walking Tours. I know they have them on yep. Beacon Hill. Or even, um, I mean, we got some... I know JP has a lot of great murals, but mm -hmm. like, it, and there's some some good ones in Roswell. What, what is too. your feeling of public art? I mean, we've got that great, uh, uh, the traffic one right mm -hmm. there in, in this in the square, which took years to get. Um, are, are murals something that that are that do you feel that they're always a place for them, 
or sometimes are I they? love street art. I you love know. it a lot. Uh -huh. uh, I love murals. I love putting a piece of work on a building that everyone can see and enjoy, you mm -hmm. know, and it becomes part of the landscape and it becomes part of uh, people's neighborhoods. Right. And Making the buildings their canvas? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I like yeah. that. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe there are like some places where they don't necessarily belong, but I, I pretty strongly think that, I mean, more murals more, the merrier. More art the better. Right? Um, one last question, because we're kind of, <clears throat> we're running out of time a little bit mm -hmm. here. Um, it, it, do you see a space in Rosendale or, 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 or a need in Rosendale for like one of those little jazz clubs? Where, where people can kind of go and, and listen to some live music on a more regular basis. I know there's, there's, there's Neil's great uh, op uh, open mic and, uh, and the bistro on Burr Street has jazz every th other Thursday or something yeah. like that. But I mean someplace where every Thursday, Friday and Saturday there's going to be a rotation of live music where you can go and maybe get a bite to eat and a beverage and listen to some live music. Do you think Rosendale would be a space for that absolutely kind of thing. Yeah. yeah i mm. think people would love that yeah definitely there's a there's a, i think there's a great cry for that kind of thing so. we actually have a really fun event coming up mm -hmm. this weekend i did one of my val's views on it uh mm -hmm. last week but um the event producer of it diane Virtus, reached out to me over the weekend what is, what's going on um so it's in franklin park which is you know right around the corner yep uh, it's a pop-up art grove and they're going to be it's a two-day event saturday and sunday they're going to be celebrating um, all these local artists that incorporate nature into their sculptures mm, and nice. it's gonna it's free so yeah, for great. everyone and on Sunday there's a really great program with teens uh, it's called a dream within a dream and it's all these wonderful teen artists working together as musicians excuse me, musicians, uh, dance performers, visual artists, and they're just pretty, pretty much the essence of bringing youth and positivity into in, in a great combination. It's definitely something people should check out if they can this That's weekend. Awesome. Um, speaking, of, speaking of that, we've got like a minute left. I just wanted to run this question because of our great guest today. Yes. When you, when, you were, when you were a kid, was there a place where you could go to? Was there a boys and girls club type thing available? Uh, for you and your crowd? Um, I don't think there was. I grew up in Surbridge and there was a lot of groups, but I also, there were a lot of kids in my neighborhood mm -hmm. growing up and we all hung out together and rode bikes together. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, there was like different, I, mean, I don't think there really was something yeah. quite like the Boys and Girls Club, to be honest, now that mm. I think of it. I think the inner city is probably the place where it's needed the most. I agree. So, Bill, thanks. Thanks. That was a good show. It flew by. Yeah, it did. It was great having uh, Mr. Kraft on yes, to talk it, to us it, about it. Yes, it. it most certainly is. It, it's a great opportunity when we get to have people with such great commitment to our community yeah. here with us. Listen, gang, thanks an awful lot for being here with us. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Glenn. Did, did I pause? Did I nod off there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, thanks an awful lot for being here with us, gang. Let's get, get out there and do something artful this weekend. Will you j visit a museum? Get down to this thing for the weekend. Where is that again? Uh, it's at Franklin Park. Franklin Park. The Wilderness get down there. Picnic Grove. It sounds like an awful lot of fun. Listen, like we like to say every week, please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Do something artful. Do it for them, please, okay? We'll dig you next week, right? We'll dig you next week. Okay, gang. Bye-bye. Thanks.